Welcome back. We are talking, well, I am talking. Scott's not here, you may have noticed. He is working on a really powerful message about the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So he won't be able to join us this time around, which is sad too, because we did try and make this video together and somehow the video got turned off and, um, and we couldn't figure out what happened to the rest of it. Um, and this was a really good, really powerful uh, few chapters. So the last one, we the last chapter we talked about in, in this book, Rhythm of Life by Matthew Kelly. We ended on this line, there must be more to life. This next, this next chapter is called The Five Questions. And they're basically the questions that man and woman has been asking since the existence of creation itself, right? And these are the questions. Who am I? Where did I come from? What am I here for? How do I do it? Where am I going? Now, he says, of course, the second question introduces uh, us to the ideas of creation and life. Question three and four kind of give birth to mysteries of love and joy and happiness, but also suffering and discontent and especially uh, the the never ceasing struggle uh, to experience uh, the good versus evil in our in our lives. Um, but to answer the all of the questions, we have to start with one, and that is who am I? Because it it goes back to the creation. Who? Because because if no one created you, that is a much more difficult question to to answer. Because if we have God as the founder of creation and the universe, but also specifically man and woman, humanity, then that means that there was a meaning wrapped up in why God created us at all. And it's a, a, a dynamic and vastly important question. And we have a lot of mental health issues today. A lot of people are talking about mental health and 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 one of those I do think is primarily based on that question, who I who am I? And today we have seen such a loss of people's perspective that there real there really is no purpose or meaning to life. I Meaning a lot of people are just here for a span of years, they enjoy what they can, they can do what they can, and that's it. And that's a, a pretty small, very small view of life itself. But think about it. If God of the universe created us, there is a powerful, powerful meaning and purpose behind us as humankind, but also for each of us individually. All right. The next chapter is called The Meaning of Life. What do you do or what you do and what you have? is what is said as the most important things in this culture. And doing and having is kind of the focus. You can see it around us, especially here in the North, where we're over busy, we're overworked, we're overstressed, we're overcommitted, and we're over tired. <laughs> and, and that is not the natural order. There is There needs to be a theme. There needs to be a string of a, a, a string of reason behind all of it, and he actually likens it to basically a soap opera, which he says there is always something happening, but nothing ever really happens. Meaning there is drama, there's activity, there's there you know words being spoken, but what ties it all together? So an episode might be entertaining, a series might be entertaining, but what's the reason behind any of it? And and he wants us to be connected once again to those primary questions. And he says, uh, he doesn't come right out and say it, but but I believe that God says, you know, who you become, who you are becoming how you are treating the life experiences. Are you growing from them? Even during the suffering, are you learning? Are you letting God mold you 
throughout the highs and lows because the becoming is infinitely more important than what you do and what you have. And of course, Matthew Kelly says, who you're becoming means that the, the greatest purpose that we have is to become the best version of ourself. Why? Because God made, made each of us individually with something in mind, a why behind it, a purpose behind it, an intention. And the way to fully accomplish that potential and frankly, the way to fully give glory to God and, and show others through uh, our, um, our being a representation of who God is, is by becoming the best version of ourself. And so he, he has this paragraph. I want to read this off a little, just a little bit. But he says, you know, God doesn't want to control you or manipulate you. He doesn't want to force you to do anything. In fact, God wants you to... God really wants to invite you in to the possibilities. God wants to show you the amazing mystery, but also the potential that is in each of us. And, and that's how God constantly does it, by an invitation with a loving sense of, this could be your future together with me. Let's do this. So, uh, we're going into seven dreams and Matthew Kelly says he has a dream journal, of course, but, and he's focused on becoming the best version of himself, but he does have these dreams and he wants to share them with us. They are powerful, powerful dreams and they are, are a powerful kind of clarity about the things that, that in my opinion, all of us actually truly want. We are all geared to try and move towards happiness. Um, we're geared towards, towards wanting to fulfill that desire to have peace and happiness. But of course, oh, I don't want to get into it right now. Why, why don't we do the things? Um, but I want to focus on these dreams because there is a relationship between these dreams and finding that meaning and purpose. I continually say, uh, because I, 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 in my background of being a dream manager, I've been looking at people's dreams and examining the deepest levels of what they are. And, and what I have found is the deepest dreams that we have really connect to that God-given purpose deep, deep within us. And unfortunately, it's often the thing that we fear the most as well. Why do singers, famous singers, fear getting on stage? Why do artists fear showing their art to the world? Why do we, why do we fear? Because those are the deepest things within us. And if, and we're afraid that if we show them to others, we will get put down. We will get shot down. We'll get told an answer to the, one of the greatest questions that we have, which is, am I worthy? And am I good enough? And it, and it hurts deeply to try and accomplish that dream within us and get told that is wrong and that is not wanted. It's basically saying to someone, you're not wanted because dreams are a representative of who we are. So I want to read off some of this because when I read them, I could just feel God's presence kind of moving um, and, and acknowledging these are his dreams for me too. No, it's not scripture, but sometimes God's presence is felt upon, uh, upon different writings that we see, whether we see it in a devotional of Oswald Chambers or something that Matthew Kelly has written. The first dream, I have a dream for you. And he starts off every, every, every one of the seven. I have a dream for you that you have complete control over your mental and physical faculties, and that you are slave neither to food nor drink nor any other substance. I dream that you will be free, that you will have freedom in the truest sense of the word, the strength of character to do what is right in each situation. That was, that was powerful. I don't, I don't have time to read all of them, but I want to read off the seventh one. I have a dream for you 
that you discover a deep and abiding interior peace. The peace that comes from knowing that who you are, where you are, what you do is essentially good and makes sense. That you are contributing to the happiness of others and that you are progressing toward becoming the best version of yourself. Again, powerful. And I would tell you to just pick up this book and read off those seven dreams as if God himself wrote you a letter. The next chapter is called A New Perspective. Frankly, we need a new perspective in life because, let's face it, the, the, the TV, the news, the radio, all of it is trying to, to create in each of us a specific perspective that they want us to have and not God. And let me tell you, we need to see through the eyes of Jesus once again. When he said, open your eyes and open your ears over and over, he meant, I want you to see this. I want you to try and adopt the same perspective that I have. So, the, and, he, and he says, we have to remember that there is more. That in fact, we cannot le um, live without dreams because they foster hope. And hope is one of the forces by which we live. And that's why hope is one of the top three. Faith, hope, and love. We need those three to go through the struggles, to go through the strife and trials and temptations, the pain and the failures and the criticism and the disappointment. Why? Because we have to hope that there is still a better future to come. We do want that better future. And, and, he, and he goes on to say that a dream of ours, of each of us, is a self-revelation. The greater danger for most of us is not that our aim is too high and we miss it, but that it is too low and we reach it. Meaning that's why we need to dream. It causes us to pursue. It causes us to be passionate. It causes us to say, I need God in this, to accomplish this dream. It causes us to think we cannot do this on our own. We need other people. For Thoreau once said, go confidently in the direction of your dreams and you will live the life that you've imagined. And that I do believe earnestly that that is what God wants. A dream is not something that you come by easily. Let's face it, it's almost representative of, of some of the best movies. Even if, even if those people die trying, a dream is worth having. A dream is worth pursuing. It changes the world for the better, the, the God-given dreams. And then he says, live passionately. This last part of the section is basically you must find that passion and hold on to it for dear life because, because otherwise we begin to float. Otherwise we begin to veer off course. We, we become convinced of other people's perspectives. When we get convinced of, of superficial wants that the TV trying to convince us to buy, and that, is, and that is not how we live passionately. He says, while some of us are sitting around letting the sand in the hourglass of life empty, thinking I would give my whole life to be able to do that. Some people do give their whole life to live out their dream. They're giving their whole lives to the magnificent and meaningful pursuit of their dreams. Some people are waiting for them to happen. And those are, that's a vain type of waiting because other people listen to the movements that are happening within them. The Holy Spirit, in this case, in my opinion, Holy Spirit moving within you to help you move in the direction of life itself. And uh, an amazing section that we, and this is just the first part of this book. And we are going to get into part two as well. I'm going to be doing that one by myself. And, and I really hope that this, this book is going to encourage you. And I, and I hope that it encourages you to even pick this up and start reading something that is positive and life-giving. Because there's, all, there, there's plenty, of, plenty of voices out there that are negative, that are trying to crush dreams, that are, that are moving in the wrong direction. And my friends, God calls us to live a different life, to show that God is present and active even right now. And I'll see you on the next video.